Good morning, Biloxi. Well, we slept pretty good. That Chan, he left us midnight, so that was good. Um, I did play music to try to over overpower his his noise. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> Sean's like, doo -doo -doo. Uh, but we're gonna get started this morning. We're headed to Orange Beach, yep. Orange Beach, Alabama, and um, it's gonna be a nice day on the water. We'll come back and share how many miles we're gonna be traveling and all that kind of good stuff. Sean's getting all of our lines off so we can shovel on out of here. Already got the power done. Yep. Got the generator running so we can have some coffee later. All right, let's get this show on the road. Well, Captain's got his hat on early this morning, does he? <laughs> the sun is beaming. I don't even know what time it is. <sighs> At 42. We got a lot of pictures of sunsets, but not a sunrise. I know, it's 742. Wow, we're up bright and early. Um, we slept good, we slept not too bad. Like I said, the chine left us at a good time. Uh, we went and had dinner last night. I uh, walked over to the Golden Nugget and ate at, I want to say Lily's. It was an Asian restaurant. We had some amazing uh, walk style uh, General Chow's chicken and a ginger salad. It was very, very good and a glass of wine. And then we um, got all of our clothes washed. They had a laundry mat there. Well, they had a washer and dryer. That's all they had was a washer and dryer. Was $2 a load. So I did two loads of laundry and two dryers. So what is that, eight bucks? So $8 I did my laundry. You know, I had to sit, I had to keep going back and checking on it, but it wasn't that bad and it saved us a ton of money. So I just really, Sean, I just really like when people come pick my laundry up and do it for me. <laughs> But that was good. I'm, I'm glad we got that out of the way. But we're headed to Orange Beach. Orange Beach, Alabama. We think it might be 70 miles, 60, 70 miles. We're not 100% sure. We're going to check on that in a second. But somewhere in that range, I have a marina all lined out. And I will tell the lovely um, about time. We saw that beautiful pier. What's it called, Sean? The Schooners? Yeah. Yeah, that pier. Schooners Pier, yeah. It, right here in Biloxi. And it looked very pretty. Um, we did not get to stay there. Um, we stayed at this other one and it wasn't bad. A little hor horrific getting in the marina. And I'm going to let Sean tell y'all a little bit about that today. Um, if he can remember, I know his, <laughs> he's trying to block out any traumatic <laughs> stress syndrome things that happen. And that was definitely one of them. But, uh, I do want him to share that with y'all. I'm going to pan around so don't get dizzy. I'll try to go slow. Look at that bridge. Is that 90, Sean? Yeah. That's I-90 that oh, runs- Highway 90. Oh, sorry, Highway 90. Um, <laughs> I-90. That runs the um, coast. So if you're a traveler, you've probably seen that driving over it. I have not. We always came I-10, so I don't believe I've ever been over that bridge. But definitely have now seen it from the water. Well, all right, guys. Well, we will come back to you today. Um, hopefully an uneventful, but fun, beautiful weather. It looks like we're gonna have a great ride today. Uh, looks like glass, so hopefully it'll stay that way. Well, guys, I will tell you that this uh, morning is absolutely beautiful so far. Captain left me in charge. <laughs> I don't know how well that's gonna go. I got my little thing here. I'm gonna keep watching it. Um, but you know, I don't know that he ever goes and watches these videos because I'm obviously the one that's doing them um, for memories. So we always have them and can go back and see them. Um, but I do want to give him a shout out because he is absolutely an amazing person and an even better captain. And uh, for us to go on this trip was 100% him. Not only did he work really hard to have all the money for it. I mean, of course, I take care of things too and I do work. But, you know, he's the, he's the person that makes the most and works extremely hard. Um, but he also did all of the planning and the thought behind it and I see him every morning when I wake up he's already on his phone looking at maps and stuff and I'm just like I just want to tell him thank you if he ever watches this or sees this thank you Sean you're doing an amazing job and I have had a wonderful wonderful time still have two weeks left and I cannot cannot believe it I'm so excited and um yeah well guys it looks like it's gonna be an absolute pretty day on the water look at that sun got crystal blue skies and crystal blue ocean and just nice and smooth so all right okay Cappy Captain <laughs> you scared yourself 
get my hat on. But it's <laughs> me. Oh, that's too funny. Okay, so um, when you left me earlier to drive, I'm up here by myself. He's downstairs in the cabin. And I keep hearing, like, three times I heard something. And it sounded like eyes and glass flapping or something, you know, splashing. I even looked out the side to see. I didn't see anything. And so when you came up here, what did you tell me? I came out of the back door. It's a sliding door, right? The sliding glass door. As soon as I opened the door, I heard a loud slap. It sounded like a dinghy fell off or something major fell off. So I closed the door and I looked around the side and there was a huge dolphin <laughs> jumping like five feet away, jumping our weight about five feet away from the boat. It was pretty cool. His whole body came out of the water. I'm, I'm talking about tail and everything. <laughs> so that's will, what I heard. I just didn't get to see it. If you're not ready for it, it will scare you. <laughs> My first thought was something fell off the boat. <laughs> That's too funny. You're so lucky. Okay, so I've been telling everybody about our horrible experience yesterday docking this beast. <laughs> okay, yeah, we were coming in. We were at a, uh, a marina behind the Golden Nugget in Biloxi. We were backing in, and the left side, my forward side, wind was coming from that direction. Um, and it was pretty strong wind. Wind was, was, it, it, was so, it, it was blowing so hard, it was actually hard to hear Sydney. We were talking. And I had a, a probably about a one foot weight coming in at me. So as we're coming in, back into the uh, the slip, on my port side, which is where the wind's coming from, is where the finger pier is. The finger pier is only half as long as the boat, so it's maybe 20 feet long. Not very long. And they had these pilings out out there in front. So as soon as you miss that first piling, you're coming in. And uh, to the right is one too, at midship. And it was blowing me away from the, the finger pier. Of course, my number one thing with this is, is making sure Cindy's safe and that kind of thing. So I came in, I made sure she was safe. Now, I don't have any kind of bow thrusters or stern thrusters. I wish I did, but a boat this size, you don't have to have it. It would be nice to have. But some of you probably know this, but not, not everybody does. I just learned it a couple years ago. But you know, as I was coming in on the left side, coming in with the wind and the waves, but I had to get the boat push to the left so as the piling was over here bit chip and i was against that i would put i was gonna i would call it the left and right motor you know a lot easier than for yeah. starboard we gotta be all fancy <laughs> yeah we're not trying to be fancy we're just trying to <laughs> you know, explain what we did so the right motor i left the uh the throttle all the way back but the right motor i'll bump it forward right and it would just pivoting on the, that side of the uh, midship, it will bring the bow of the boat to the left. And as soon as it will go left, I would leave that one in forward and put the other one in forward and it will bring me that direction. And then I would bump it in neutral. As it was going in neutral, I put the right motor in reverse and it brings the back end over, right? So Cindy was able to get off him. Then it went back over here again. So when she was off, same thing. I got to get the bowing. I put the right motor forward and brought me over towards her and then I put both motors forward at the last minute I put the right one in reverse and the left one in neutral and back up again she was able to tie me off on the stern when she got the back then the stern tied off of course the bow went back just like what it does <laughs> and we don't want to be too easy so that now it's laying sideways in the, in the deal and it makes you nervous because you have the dinghy hanging off the back and you got a little money tied up in that dinghy, you know, the motor's <laughs> hanging off the back. Well, and it's a West Marine dinghy. <laughs> it's a West Marine. We got gold coins for it. But anyway, uh, so you know, the concrete slip behind you, concrete behind you, concrete on your uh, your left side. So you don't want to tear the boat up, and you got waves, so the boat's going up and down. Well, that's and, you know, and then you, you, you have Cindy over there. I can't see her, because I have a camera in the back. So, so oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you bring it back to me now, but... But you can see from where I am, I can't see her, I can't hardly hear her or anything. Uh, but anyway, uh, so finally what I have to do is, my, now my stern is tied off. So all I do now is bump the, the, the gear, the engine's in gear and back out of gear again. And so left motor backwards, right motor forwards, and I get back in neutral. And what you're doing is you're twisting the boat, but you can't leave it in gear because it's too much tension on that cleat and that rope over here, that line. You could break a line or, or whatever. If it broke the line, it would have some much force on it to slam me into the piling over here. So I had to keep bumping it and let off. Bump it and let off. 
it was slowly bringing the bow over, even though the wind was kind of pushing me away. And then uh, Cindy was able to get the midship line on then. Once the midship line was on, we were okay, but it kept trying to push me back into the pilot behind. So the stern, which is the back, there's a cleat there. We had to put a line on that, go over forward towards the midship and attach it onto the dock. That's called a spring line. And that keeps the, the boat from going backwards. Um, and you also have to have one go the opposite direction so the boat doesn't try to go forward. And also, you know, so our biggest thing when we, when we dock is go ahead and get the thing tied up or everybody's safe and it's not going to do any damage. Here we have to assess to see if it's a, a fixed dock or a, a floating dock. The floating dock, just leave it like it is, it doesn't really matter. But a, uh, a fixed dock, you have, to, you have to watch it because the tide can go up and down two feet, one or two feet, depends on where you are. You can look on your charts and see what the tide typically is. But I know in Galveston, it's gone where it's gone down three feet. So you, you have to have your line. You can't have them just tied straight from the boat out because, you know, you come back to your boat and be hanging mid, <laughs> mid air above the water. Help me. Yeah, and that, that could be bad. Your boat could be hanging up sideways. So also, whenever I tied up, I was con concerned about tying up to the, uh, the left side, the port side. Uh, then after we got it all figured out what we're going to do, uh, we also had to tie the starboard side of the right side. And so I put some lines on that side just loose. And the reason for that is if the wind were to change in the middle of the night, I don't want to bang me against the concrete dock. So you have to think about those kind of things. And it is not difficult. You know, it takes you a little trial and error. Everything we do is trial and error. You know, two, three years ago, we were um, driving wakeboard boats on Lake Conroe. So now we're doing this, going across mm -hmm. half the country. Well, don't forget to tell them I, I lassoed something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <I'm> not, <laughs> Off the, uh, the bow, there was a, uh, a piling kind of in front of us to the left, right? And um, so I had to push this off the piling on this side with our, our boat hook, our, our pole. I pushed this off and we had, the, the line was probably 15 feet long, probably longer than that. We had one end tied, both ends tied to the boat. And she kind of lassoed it over it as I was pushing away. And it worked out good because I was about to give out, but I got a lasso. Over. He's way stronger than he looks, people. <laughs> and, and, and it's not easy to do the lasso because you got all this heavy lines, and it weighs, it weighs a lot. You're trying to keep it tangled up. And, and well, and my kind of my biggest fear is I'm going to throw that. <laughs> I'm going to throw the rope, and I'm going to go push myself <laughs> over the bow. Meanwhile, meanwhile, we have 15 to about 15 mile an hour winds. This hit us. And we have uh, probably one, one foot of weight coming in. That marine, marina was protected from the south, but it wasn't protected from the east or west at all. And everything was coming in from the east. So we were, we were taking pretty good pounding, even just trying to, trying to get it dodged. Well, this morning the marina was nice. So nice. I know the marina, it's not the marina. It's not that the marina is a terrible marina. It no. was just, we had bad conditions. Well, this morning we took all the lines off. We just sat there. <laughs> just, just sat there. And I just walked upstairs and put it here and took off. But yesterday we died three times. Trying to get it in. <laughs> now I will say, if you guys can see that little, like Sean calls it, a boat stick that's over there laying down, that I take that with me when I go down, and I used it, the little tip of it, um, to grab my midship line. I, ha I always have my lines laying where I can easily reach over onto the boat and get them. So I use that to grab my midship line because I could not get anywhere close to the boat. I also use that. So I was gonna use it to use to lasso, but I was afraid I was gonna throw the stick with the lasso. Yeah. And we need the stick. <laughs> oh, you know what? Our marine is calling us from another place. We will come back. Okay, sorry about that. Our marina in how do you pronounce it? Perdido. 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 Perdido Key. Key. I'm just gonna say we're going to the Keys. <laughs> um, we're gonna go there after Gulf Shores. We're gonna stop in, excuse me, Orange Beach tonight. And then we're going to go to the key after that. And the lady, the super nice lady at the marina we're going to stay at that I was just talking to, she's like, do you want to stay one night or two nights? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe she, after she told me they have a heated pool, they have all, they said you could take your dinghy to Floribama, which I guess is like, um, the restaurant. yeah, it's like a show. Is it a show? I don't know what it is. I'm old. I don't know. But anyway, it's where Florida and Alabama meet and they call it Floribama. We're going to go there. So we could take our dinghy there. 
She's like, you'll want to stay two nights. I'm like, I'm thinking I want to stay a couple nights there. <laughs> they have a heated pool, Sean. All right, well, I got my Mississippi tan yesterday. I'm so excited. I finally got that beautiful Mississippi tan. I'm gonna get me an Alabama tan today from the bow. Looking pretty, guys, looking pretty. We have seen some fishing boats. There's a small fishing boat going up there. We've got an island, Horn Island, you said? Yeah, Horn Island. Horn Island is right over there. It looks like snow, but it's ice. I mean, it's sand, <laughs> ice. Our next island is going to be Dolphin Island coming up on the right. Oh, nice. A little ways off. Once we pass it, we're going to turn left, go back north into uh, Mobile Bay to get to the Intercoastal Waterway and head to Orange Beach and all that. Good deal. We're going to get to there at a good time today. We'll be able to hang out and go check some stuff out. All right. Fun, fun, fun. We're coming up what Sean's saying is a spoil area and we're passing a barge. We, we slowed down so he could go through that area first and see the spoil area the spoil area. We're trying to go right between them. Oh wow. It doesn't say your footage how, how deep it is there but you look on this chart. Here we are here we're going between the two spoil area. There's a big ship channel that runs through here. And uh, so we're trying to go through a little area right here. Gotcha. So what they do is when they dig this out, drage this, they immediately pump it over here on the side. Okay. Basically digging a ditch. Yeah. Put this pool over there. Well, pay attention. Make sure. <laughs> this kind of stuff is where it kind of gets kind of nerve wracking and scary. Yeah. <laughs> you think you're out a little nowhere, but there's, you know, there, there's there is, issues. There is stuff out here. Well, good deal. And we're off the coast of um, what? We haven't, uh, we haven't gotten to Mobile yet. We're, all, we're almost to the Alabama Mississippi line. Okay. Past Pascagoula. Pascagoula. So that's where this is. So just keep watching your spoil area, Sean. <laughs> Please. Okay. Would not want anything to happen to ours someday, especially not way out here. But you can see the port way over there. Yeah, it's a big ship channel going north and south. And like I was telling you guys yesterday on that video, Sean worked in Pascagoula. Um, I bet that's probably the plant you worked at, Sean. <laughs> it probably is. <laughs> he did some power uh, stuff in that plant. Well, but, cool. But also something else. We are in the intercoastal waterway. You know, when I first started learning about the ICW a few years ago, I thought it was just a channel all the way around the whole Gulf Coast and mm -hmm. up the Atlantic Coast. But it's just not, you know, there's some areas where you're actually out in the ocean and you're, you're still following the ICW, but it's just a channel that's inside, uh, you know, offshore a couple miles. Gotcha. Probably five, six miles or so. Very interesting. We still okay? We're, we're perfect. Okay. Well, let me know when we get away from it so I can relax. Oh, you can relax. We're <laughs> okay. in the middle of it. I'm picking up speed. I know. I know. All right. Okay guys, so we wanted to tell, I'm sure most of y'all know, but like we wanted we wanted to tell y'all. So this little tabletop here was not, this was not with our boat when we bought the boat. So Sean ordered that base and installed it and it came with the pole and it can easily, all you have to do is press that little black button and it unscrews the pole out and the whole thing can come out. The base obviously stays in the floor. Um, the tabletop, we were going to buy one and they were like, I want to say over a hundred dollars they were expensive and um so we went to a boat resale shop so it's kind of like a thrift store but it's only for boat stuff and we bought this for 25 dollars and um we bought it first and then knew what kind of pedestal to buy to go with it the pedestal was like 50 i think and then um like fenders that that gripper pole that we use um i think we bought our pump for the dinghy it's a six dollar hand pump for the dinghy. Yeah, we paid like six bucks for it. Um, but they have a lot of, like, if you're looking for parts, um, they have seats, cushions, life jackets. We bought the kids little life jackets there because they're only going to wear them probably twice and then you're, they're going to be too big. So there's no point in paying, you know, $50, $60 for those kind of things. But um, there's a really nice one in Kima right there on 146. Um, but they're probably everywhere. But kind of a fun little thing to go look for. Um, they have everything from electronics to motor engine parts to, like I said, lines and cushions and interior things. Mike, we even found a dishwasher. 
They have a boat dishwasher. <laughs> I was like, I need that. And it was only like $100, but we have nowhere to put it. Well, and some of the, uh, the older boats or uh, a lot of the sailboats, they have a lot of rigging for sailboats. Used rigging. Uh, you have used parts for older boats that you can't buy new anymore. Yeah. So, you know, you, you want a, a part that, that looks the same area as your boat. You know, you don't want to put up a brand new fancy looking gauge on there. The rest of them look, look vintage, you know. Right. You want to kind of keep that. Oh, and, and, and this table is great because, you know, we, we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner up here. Even when we're either docked or while we're underway. This is where we eat uh, underway. This is where we, we eat, you know, eat all our food and sit right here. Yeah. And what was the stuff you cleaned those, um, those, what do you call those? I don't, the gauges. The gauges? <laughs> <laughs> These things. <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. It was something our friend Rich uh, told him. He's like, you should use this. Anyway, those gauges were so cloudy, you could not see hardly anything through them. And we used, I'll find out what the name of it was. And Sean used it on there. And you can see those crystal clear gauges. I almost call them instruments. I don't know. I don't know why I was going to call them instruments. I, I used it on, uh, on headlights, on cars. I've used it on a lot of things. And it's really, really good stuff. Yeah, we'll find out the name of it and tell you. You can get it from West Marine, but you got to be a goldfish. <laughs> don't, a... don't go in there uh, broke. <laughs> we got a whole bunch of dolphin right here. Maybe they're going to ride our week. And then we're not real sure what's going on over there. Let's see if I can zoom in. There's like four boats that all look the same. And then it kind of looks like, I hate to say a rescue boat, but it looks like another boat out to the side. Maybe they're doing some training or something. They kind of look like military boats, huh? Like yeah. the Coast Guard. Okay, I'm gonna go see if I can see any dolphins back there. There they are, look at them. I knew I would see them. Yay, Sean, they're doing it again. Uh, an airplane a smaller airplane right next to us <laughs> Sean says is that a seaplane I don't know if I can land with those. <laughs> you only you only got your pilot license in landing on a runway correct yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool but that there's Dolphin Island right here and we're getting closer to that but yeah I saw airplane I saw real fat there oh looks like sea tow over here Sean or is that boat US neighbor yeah it's definitely one of those yeah I think it says boat US on it <laughs> Sean's like we better not need that we're good we're good coming into the Dolphin Island area it looks like we have a pretty pretty cruise over here it's a lot like our size boat know they're our friends oh yeah that's a really pretty boat all right whoever you are your boat's beautiful I like it Let's see if I can see the name of it when it passes by it's quite beautiful they're waving to us Sean did you wave Okay, good. I'm trying to video. I was going to see if I could see where they're from or their name of their boat. They've got their eyes and glass on the back of their boat today. All right. Well, maybe they'll watch our video and say, hey, that's our boat. <laughs> if you're in the Dolphin Island area today. <laughs> I like how you can see them under the water and then when they come out. I swear they know they're being filmed. There is Dolphin Island. Looks like we've got some really pretty houses. I know they have a marina. Um, we're not going to stay there. We might stay there on the way back through. 
there's also a fort. I don't remember the name of it. I'll look it up. There's a fort on another island over here. Somebody told me there was a fort on Dolphin Island as well. So we're going to look into that. But that's pretty. That's really pretty. Okay, guys. So this is the bridge that goes from Mobile, Alabama out to Dolphin Island. I'm assuming it's called the Dolphin Island Bridge. <laughs> oh, look. I, found, I got something. <laughs> But it's a really pretty big long bridge. I've never driven over it. I've never been to Dolphin Island. I have been to Mobile. Um, actually, I have family that lives in Mobile, Alabama. Hello, Sadie, Angela, and Robert. <laughs> I was like trying to get all their names in order. Um, and I don't know if I have any more family that lives there. I don't know. Um, but they definitely live in Mobile. So hello. And we're passing through. We're continuing on. We're not stopping here. We may stop here on our way back through, but we will definitely let y'all know. Sorry if it's windy. We got get some wind today. It's not terrible though, but all right. We came out of this. I believe that's Dolphin Bay, maybe. I don't know. And we're going into Mobile Bay. I'm going to attempt to do a video from the bow of the boat. I have no idea if it's going to work. But if you see the fire off in the distance, there's like uh, smoke in the air. We've been seeing that a long time. I have, really don't have a clue what's going on. But that's Mobile in that direction. And then over here is Gulf Shores, Alabama. You can see off in the distance the high-rise hotels and things like that, at least I hope you can. Um, I've stayed there, I believe, a couple times um, for vacation. And then we're going to continue on and we're going to go to Orange Beach, which is not very far from here. I think Sean said it may be another 13 miles, so maybe an hour. Um, so I'm super excited. We're going to continue on to that. I know I'm pronouncing it incorrectly, but it's like... For DDO key. <laughs> I'm gonna say it's the keys because that's what I'm saying. We're going to the keys. And I think my cousin, I think my cousin Tim is gonna meet us there for a drink or two. So super excited about it. He lives in Pensacola, Florida. And um, I told him that I did not believe we were gonna go up into Pensacola Bay. And none of the marinas down at Pensacola, like the island part, none of them have any vacancies. So they all, which I don't blame them. So we're gonna see what happens with that. So we've had a beautiful day. You can see that God made this sky just for me. <laughs> and I am laying on the front of the boat in my little Alabama tan to go along with my Mississippi tan. And I'm too excited right now. <laughs> so we are out here. Um, I, I believe we're still in Mobile Bay, but I could be 100% <laughs> wrong. But we are definitely in the ICW and if you see Gulf Shores is over on my starboard side, and <laughs> for those of you peons, <laughs> that's my right side. And um, I am so excited because it looks like you're just going into like trees. And if you see, there's like an opening right there. And that is the ICW entrance. And I'm so excited. We've had a fantastic day. I'm sorry, Sean's on the phone with his mom right now, so if y'all hear him talking, he's not talking to me. <laughs> but I just think this is so cool. Um, we just had a wonderful day. I'm trying to keep you out of the wind. I apologize. Um, but it has just been beautiful. Beautiful homes over here. Cannot be more excited to be doing this. This is something that we've always said. Wouldn't that be cool if we could take our boat to Orange Beach? <laughs> well, guess what? Today's the day. Super excited. Okay, guys. You can see the entrance to the ICW right here. I know we've kind of been in the ICW, but... It's, you know, the difference. They're kind of in big open water back there. So this is like so super cool. It's like a little secret entrance into a passageway. <laughs> That's what it looks like. All these pretty boats coming out. These pretty little condos right here. All right. Orange Beach. I need to live here. I need to live here. I'll do it. Guys, so we are in the ICW now. And what did we come out of, Sean? Uh, Mobile Bay. Mobile Bay. We came out of Mobile Bay and into the quiet serenity of the ICW. So, so it goes from looking like an ocean to, to looking like a stream, <laughs> like we came from. Um, but super cute. There's like wetland looking areas back in here and condos. 
Full sun. I could live in here. Look, they all have boats over there. We could definitely live in here. We're only like three miles away from our marina, so hopefully it will be a fantastic marina. It looks like it is. It has a great website. Um, so I'm thinking it's going to be a great location. And we 73 have 73 miles today so far. 73 miles we drove. Dang. I rode. Sean drove. 73 miles. Look at that bird. He's got his wings all out on that piece of wood. I wonder if he's drying. Ducks don't get wet. Did you know that, Sean? Ducks do not get wet. If you, I used to have a book that said, the, the name of the book was Ducks Don't Get Wet. I read it to my kids. It talks about their feathers having oil on them, so they repels the water. That's a little side note for you. <laughs> some, some information I do know. <laughs> that was free. <laughs> What'd you say? That was free. That was, that was free. I'm not going to charge you for that. <laughs> You're like, she's not that stupid. She does know something. Useless information, I might add. Okay, guys. It's been a great day. So we are rolling into Orange Beach, ICW side. Absolutely beautiful. Really, you know, older, quaint homes, but absolutely beautiful. I would, I would have one in a heartbeat. Told Sean, this is where we need to live. Just makes me think. Like, look at that. That is just absolutely adorable. They have a, a pool and it's all covered. They have a boat. They have a fire pit, the chairs. Man, I need to be their friend. This is so pretty. Getting super close to our marina up here. All right. You know, growing up, I always went to the beach. I'm like, oh, I want to live on the beach. I want to live on the beach. I think I would totally be happy living on the ICW. Right, Sean? I'd rather be on ICW. I would too. This is just beautiful. Never even knew that this was bad, like that this was no. here. <laughs> All I knew is the ocean was there. <laughs> Had no clue. Look at this one. Look. They have like this little patio built and their little boat dock hanging at like a little picnic table over the water. This is so cute. Oh, gosh. You guys are so lucky that live here. It's kind of cool seeing this from um, the water side as well. That's a pretty, pretty house. They got a pool. I think y'all can probably tell I'm looking for a pool. <laughs> we have a pool. <laughs> I miss my pool. <laughs> I do use our pool quite a bit. This is so cute. This is hilarious. Look at his speed limit. Speed limit is 500. <laughs> Sean said, with those engines, I bet it is. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh, no. All right. Look, I want to show y'all this little tiny boat. I'm going to wave and be sweet. Hey! Watch. Watch with their weight. We have to go over their weight. We have to turn sideways and go over it. Otherwise, it would beat the crap out of our boat. And I get, I don't know if people don't know that or they just don't care. I think they just don't care. Because they go flying past other boats their size and they know they're waking them. And you know what? I don't care that they don't care. You okay, Sean? Yeah, I'm okay. I don't care that they don't care, but like Sean said, we have furniture and dishes and all that kind of stuff in here, whereas they don't, so it's not that big of a deal. But I just want everybody to know you can wake a 41-foot boat. Yeah, people think a small boat, you're not going to do anything, but it really does. You know, yeah. 20-foot boats will make it where, you know, water's coming over the, the, uh, the bow of our boat and you know, I think it's because we're, we're so tall. You know, the time you rock back and forth, 20 feet out of the water, you're moving five feet back and forth. Yeah. Instead of just sitting still, if you're only two feet out of the water. If I felt like cleaning up my house, I'd let you not turn and let them see <laughs> what kind of damage it does. Oh, pictures coming off the They wall. probably know. They If they have boats, they know. If you don't have a boat, guess what? It can rock it, and it would definitely yeah, will good. rock you big time. So we are at our marina. Oh my gosh, I'm not doing that, but they have one of those, I don't know what you call them, but you tie yourself uh, with this little harness and you walk the course. Not doing that, but they have a volleyball sand course. They have outdoor seating, um, a restaurant. Really cool looking, super nice people. Two very nice uh, dock hands helped us get our fuel. Fuel was expensive here. It was like five, 5.30, Sean, a gallon? Yeah. Somewhere around in there, which is the most we've paid. But we are getting closer to 
um, Florida. And he said about four miles down um, is the wharf in Orange Beach. And he said you can ink, uh, dock at their marina with our little dinghy and um, go shopping and uh, eat and all that kind of fun stuff. So I think that's what we're going we're gonna to work on doing. So we are all uh, tucked into our marina. We washed the boat. Sh or Sean washed the boat. <laughs> I watched him. He looked really cute washing that boat. Um, and he's checking all of our fluids. And so far he says that this boat has done phenomenal. We're super proud of her. She's done. Watch your head, sweetie. <laughs> Watch that cute head. He, uh, the boat's done very, very well. Um, it's a super nice marina. Honestly, we have not left the boat. We've just been cleaning and filling the water. And we got fuel when we got here. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm grilling. We're going to grill some chicken tonight and probably stay in. Honestly, we're tired. <laughs> So wore us out driving all that way. Okay, guys. So I, <laughs> not trying to sell you Tupperware, but I have got to show you this asparagus because I love fresh vegetables. And I brought, I bought this asparagus days before we left, which was two weeks ago. And I put it in this Tupperware. It's called a Fridge Smart. And look at my asparagus. Can you see? It is absolutely perfect and crispy and still going strong. So. If you travel in a boat and you want fresh vegetables and you don't want them to go bad in like two days, then this is the best product to have. Okay, so it's called a Fridge Smart and you can buy it from Tupperware. And if you like me, <laughs> you can order it from CindyWatford.com. <laughs> but I just had to show y'all, didn't I, Sean? Mm -hmm. I opened I go, oh my God, I have to show them. This is probably our, my most favorite Tupperware product. But look at that. Look. Absolutely perfect. No throwing away vegetables on this boat. Okay, guys. So, we are grilling and hanging out on the boat. And I just saw... Oh, there he is. Look, there is a um, jellyfish. Can y'all see him? In the water there? Look at him. He's right here in our marina. Check him out. OMG. That is the coolest thing. It's not like those cabbage head that we saw last year in Rockport, Texas, but check him out. His tentacles, that's something you'd see in the aquarium. And he's right here next to our boat. That is so cool. So here is our marina. I'll walk around here and show you. Um, beautiful marina, really pretty boats. A lot of people hanging out on their boats, like grilling and chilling like we do at home. So I just thought that was so sweet. Um, we've already spoke to a couple um, this boat next to us, I'll see if I can get it here so you can see it. This boat next to us was the boat that I envied as we pulled into the marina. And I was like, oh my God, I want that boat. It's this one. Look how beautiful that boat is. A 48 foot sedan bridge. Absolutely beautiful. I believe it's a Sea Ray. Um, they are actually, he came over and spoke to us. He's from Montgomery, Texas, which is our neighbor to Conroe, where we're from. And he grew up there and him and his wife live here and he uh his parents actually own this boat and their his parents live in navasota i believe he said texas um, which is also our neighbor and his dad is flying his plane hello <laughs> down here today to um hang out with them so i thought that was kind of cool and they were super super sweet so we already have some friends but that boat also down there i love that boat but anyway we're grilling some chicken and watching jellyfish and Sean is, I'll try to go slow so I don't make y'all dizzy. Sean is right inside of there, checking on fluids. <laughs> I know that's not good, you can't see him. I'll take y'all in there in a little bit.